What's up, everybody? Welcome to Title 24. I'm Ricky Carmichael alongside my co-host, Ryan Villapoto. Hopefully you guys are having a, uh, a great day. Uh, first of all, we've got to thank uh, NBC Sports uh, for presenting us, Title 24. We appreciate uh, everyone there. And of course, our sponsors, United Motorsports, Quad Lock Case, and uh, Boxo USA. Um, RV, we're going to step right into it. Man, what a weekend from uh, Spring Creek, Millville, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I call it Millville over, uh, over uh, Spring Creek. But it was a lot of fun. And I think the biggest thing, get right into it, uh, Chase Sexton, just how fast he was. Uh, I feel like other than Pala or Fox Raceway, that first national, this was really the, the, the most that um, – Jet Lawrence has been challenged, I believe, uh, all season since the first round, and uh, mm -hmm. we got some we got some sound on on, on Chase and where where he's at because I think that's most important, and then we can kind of break it down. So let's hear that's what right. Chase has to say. First moto, I had a really good charge. I ended up I fell three times a day, which is not uh, not ideal, but I uh, I fell um, first lap and really put a good charge on it. Got to the back of Jet and. We uh, went to battle, so um, yeah, my riding's getting better, just a uh, few mistakes, and I think that is just a little bit of, um, yeah, trying to up the pace, and uh, I'm not going to quit, and I'm going to throw everything at it, so I'm um, looking forward to Washougal, and the rest of these tracks are kind of my style, and looking forward to uh, some more battles. Go for it, big dog. Yeah, no, so uh, man, hope everybody had a good weekend. Yeah, Spring Creek was uh, was, was a rad race to watch, but no, it was, it was a really, like you said, um, Jed has been in the, this position for quite a, quite a few races now. And this is, in my opinion, the first time that he's really been, um, you know, challenged and, uh, you know, chase rode well, still we're having those, he's had those little mistakes, but also too, I think, dude, they're both pushing limits. I wouldn't say we're, I'm watching a replay right now, coming across the finish onto the starting start straight. Um, these guys are going for it. No longer can I sit here and say, you know, is Jet riding around at 80%? Because I don't think here at Millville it was an 80% race. I believe it was it was 100%. He obviously um, was the smarter of the two, knew the track's limits. Um, but also, again, Chase, being a few races into this thing, um, you know, he hasn't had as many gate drops yet as as Jet to for for him to see this pace now multiple weekends. Um, and also being able to improving his speed, um, from when he's from, from when he came back, I think is a, is a huge testament to kind of where he's going. He's mm -hmm. got to clean up his laps though. Um, you know, those little mistakes, like he said, in the press conference, he fell three times, um, you know, and uh, racing against a guy like jet, you can't do that, man. No, I mean, you, you've said it. I mean, number one, okay, we just watched his first, his, yeah, the crash basically on the first lap of the first moto, and he got away with one. Oh, I mean, he got, dude, he got so lucky that that front end didn't catch more and take a bigger bite. Otherwise, that thing would have high sided and mm -hmm. perhaps been the, the end of uh, end of his day for sure. No, totally. That, that actually reminded me of um, Trey Kennard's crash at Washougal when he caught the front wheel and crashed. And then you go watch Chase coming down, um, down the first downhill and just it looks like the bike kind of kicked inwards a little bit. And then he was a little off balance and then just washed it out. This is uh, we're watching for for people just listening to the podcast. Now we're watching the second moto. This is when Ch uh, Chase was leading. He comes out of that sand corner. Oh, and and he was at the top of the berm and he grabs a handful. And actually, Ryan, you know how it is too. That like that sand, even though it's it's sandy, it has a hard base. And he just got a little oh. happy with the throttle. Then uh, right there by the mechanics area, that turn, uh, that kind of elevate goes up a, a little little step up, and then and you turn right for that long straightaway. He loses the front in there. And so, um, as we always do, like to answer some questions, we're going to throw it in our analysis today. This one's from uh, the Racer's Edge, and it kind of goes right into what I was wanting to know from URV. Uh, the Racer's Edge asks, why does Chase lose the front end? Technique, mental, fatigue, or go for it. Why is he losing the front end? All right. So um, I know we've talked about this on the show in the past, um, a little Supercross. bit during Supercross, you know, yeah. with with his mistakes and we were pretty hard on him. Um, and towards the end of Supercross, obviously, with Eli getting hurt, um, he seemed to get those those little mistakes wrapped up. And now 
we come here to Millville and we saw three crashes, um, two crashes and then a slide out essentially. Um, you know, not definitely not ideal. I will say that each and every motorcycle, yes, he's both, they're both riding for uh, factory HRC Honda. Yeah. Um, but yes, Hunter or NJet, they, they pick their own, you know, setups. So they develop their motorcycle to um, the last 10, 15, 20% of what they want, you know? So I do believe that the packages are different um, from suspension. How much? I don't know. I can't, I can't tell you that. I don't know what's in them, but I can guarantee you they are different. And then I will say, also say, I think, you know, this has kind of been, Chase has done this in the past. So I'm hope it's got to be a little bit of mental. Right. Um, I don't know if it's actually um, his riding itself, like, you know, his, his, his uh, technique. technique. Chase no. has, I think that Chase has phenomenal technique um, right. in my personal opinion. So I well, think he does. he does a little bit of um, mental side of it too. You know, it's got to be a little bit of that. And, and the, and the pace they're pushing that they were pushing at Millville, you know, it was pretty, pretty insane pace. So yeah, um, yeah I don't know. I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to see, you know, this next weekend at Washougal, um, you know, Chase said at press conference that these these last couple rounds he's really looking forward to. Seems like the tracks suit him suit him well. So we're hope hopefully he can put it together. Um, you know, not to say I wouldn't like to see Jet go twenty two and zero because that's pretty yeah. sick too. Um, yeah. You know, but I would also love to see Chase um, stop that win streak. Yeah, it. it um, I, I I think that it, t he has great technique to back you up. Uh, yeah, I think their bikes are different. It could be anything. I don't think that everyone's going to share with RV and I what it might be. And RV, you know what it, I mean, dude. It, I I wouldn't think that their suspension settings are the same. Uh, you know, maybe there's some clamp clamp difference, steering angle. I mean, I don't know. Are the is the gearing the same? Who knows? I mean, I mean the linkage might be different. There's a million yep. different things that uh, they, the riders can change. Uh, so yeah, I don't think it's technique. I, I personally feel unlike supercross cause there were so many times in supercross where he was in the lead and it didn't look like he was riding over his head or riding that rivet and, and he fell down. But I blame these this weekend a little more just on that speed. You, you know how it is. I mean, like when you're pushed to the limit, if you don't back it down or you're not comfortable riding that feet, uh, that speed, I believe that, you know, your, your chances and percentages of making a mistake and going down are so much higher. At least that's the way it was for me. You know, if I was racing Stu, if I was racing Chad and they were faster and I tried to go over my limit nine out of 10 times I would crash. And I just feel like, as Chase is learning this speed, and, and to your point, he hasn't had that many gate drops and, and tried to figure out and race Jet and, and see what Jet is doing, he's probably going to have these these mistakes. But, yeah, man, dude, you can't – he knows it. He's, he talked about it in the presser. You can't fall three times and, and, beat a, and beat a guy like Jet. I second what you say also, RV, is I feel like um, Jet was giving it 120% or a hundred percent for sure. He wasn't just toying with him. Um, and, and the reason that I think that is because you go last week when, when Chase got close, he pulled away this weekend, this wasn't the case. So, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be interesting though. I think, um, I think that jet's going to have his hands full at, uh, Washougal. Um, I got another question from, uh, let's see here. It's uh Tigo underscore one thirty one. Is Chase Sexton actually considered faster if he rides so wild, uh, if he crashes? So, I mean, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that uh, it's great to be fast. And there's been a lot of fast individuals that have come through our racing um, that, you know, haven't been able to keep it up on two wheels, right? So part of part of being fast is also being able to stay on two wheels and, and maintain that pace. Um so at this point, no, if, if, if Chase can put in a couple faster laps, but is, is laying on the ground to answer the question, um, no, he's not faster because you can't win races, you know, um, tipping over and crashing. So, um, <laughs> I would say, uh, jet is definitely faster at this point, even if it doesn't show on lap times, it shows at the end of the race and it's a one, one finish again. Uh, right. you got your answer right there. That's right. Hey, uh, do we got, so. Uh, all of our viewers and all of our listeners, thanks so much. Uh, epic, epic questions. I will say, like, we had a ton, a ton of questions from you guys about the chase and Jet and which which guys do we think is faster. And I feel like Jet has the upper hand uh, right now. 
Uh, yes, Chase is right there. You can just about dang near match him, uh, but he's got to iron it out, I figure, and he'll learn that pace. But before we switch gears and, and get some sound bites from uh, Jet, I want uh, I want to. I want to ask you this question, and it's from uh, Seal underscore Oscar. Appreciate the question. Honest opinion: Tomac and Lawrence, full health. Who's winning? Ooh. tough one. Um, yeah, I think it's a very tough one. Um, I think that Jet's pace right now to answer that question, and and his how consistent he is, and that he's been able to do it. You know, now with a couple weekends with Chase back. Um, in, 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 in at Millville here, which was a very close race. Um, I think that you you would have races where you would have, um, they'd swap it up, meaning, um, depending on the track, depending on what side of the bed, these guys woke up on that morning. Is it going it, to, it's going to come down to that extra, like little bit, you know, three to 5% that somebody can squeeze out of, um, either Eli squeezing out, out of himself or jet vice versa. And if Eli shows up with, and he's down three, 5% that day, um, you're going to get a, you're going to get a, uh, a, a, you know, swap situation. I think, I, I don't think you'd see 22 and oh, um, mm -hmm. maybe you would, I don't know, but I would say as a, as a, I'm not a betting man, but if I was betting, I would say no, if Eli was, it was out there, I do not think he would go 22 and oh, but I definitely am in going to say he would win overalls. Um, and it would be one hell of a series. That's for oh, sure. Oh they both gosh, out there. It'd be so epic. And I agree. No, I don't think that jet would go. I don't think he'd go undefeated. Uh, if Eli was because, and this is why I think, I think that Eli, although he might not have the raw speed, uh, that jet has, but I just don't think that you are going to get as many gifts from a guy like Eli uh, than you would compared to a guy like Chase. And I'm not bagging on Chase. I think he's awesome. I think uh, he is a generator. No, to, to, to your right point, he's, that, he that's makes just... too many mistakes. He does. He does. You're not bagging on him. He just, at this point in his career, yeah. where he's at, he's he hasn't um, sharpened the knife just enough to where he can ride that ragged edge, but also be consistent. He, we see yeah. these mistakes happen. Yeah, yeah, totally. So that's why that's why I feel it would be great, and you would and, and Jet would have to be on. There would be no mulligans or gimmies, and he would have to perform because yeah, just the mistakes. I mean, Eli is is much older, much experienced. He's won at all levels, multiple championships, and he knows what to do. He's strong at all the races, and and sometimes you know that experience, as you know, Ryan is just so hard to beat. So I think it would have been it would be good. I think in the end, Jet would. I would give the advantage to Jet, but it would cert I think it'd go down to the last moto for sure. I believe. Yeah, that. yeah, I agree. And I think the one thing too is, and I think differences between Chase and and let's and Eli, for example, yeah. um, mm -hmm. is I I kind of look at um, Eli being um, even a better dunge for the. And what I mean by that is 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 you see some of these motos let's use daytona example that's an easy one to use in it as an example like eli can ride that ragged edge and push 110 percent for 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 a 20 minute supercross race so if eli's feeling like that when you know those certain days that when then that he can't be beat on if he shows up at a millville or a, mm -hmm. any one of these of, of our outdoor series uh, races and he shows up like that I mean, that's, that's a gnarly dude to beat. That's a gnarly Eli to beat, right? So even Jet on a good day. So not to say Jet couldn't beat him, but I just think, right, it's just a, it's just a different scenario if, you, if, you, if Eli's involved. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I go back to, so you, we could just role play this. I hate role playing it, but just for argument's sake, because this is our podcast and we like, to, we like to talk about scenarios, you know, you, you eliminate that crash, which most likely Eli probably wouldn't have fell down and then he had good speed. I mean, Jet, Jet has no time to rest. If you give Jet the opportunity to rest, it's game over. And uh, he, he's, Yeah, they're too efficient. He's going to beat you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and dude, I think, uh, yeah, I mean – um, we'll you know how it is, see that we'll hopefully see that soon. You know, that, that yeah. duo, the, you know, or the, the trio actually chase Eli and jet, you know, that's going to be an insane, um, insane three rate, three race battle, you know, perfect, perfect. Uh, mad kudos though to you, chase. That was a, that was a hell of a comeback. That first moto to, to fall down spot that time and then reel yourself back in past really good guys, by the way uh that that was it, it was certainly fun to watch so i i personally think that right now if you're talking momentum i think uh chase sexton 
has the uh, momentum and he's in a great spot going into uh, into Washougal. Um, and Ricky, I, I mean, if Chase can yeah. bridge just that last little gap to, to, to Jet and actually – make a few passes jet has to pass back and actually get into a do a fight out there you know like i'm not saying jets you know uh gonna make a mistake but that's how you pressure a guy like right. jet into mm -hmm. into making a mistake is is putting him under fire and keeping the fire on him and every then passing him back and every and jet passes back and exactly every single time that way that you know right now even though it was a great race by chase I, th I still feel like mentally where Jet's at, he, he still knows he has the upper hand. And when that pendulum swings or becomes 50-50, now it's like, okay, I got to have a good start. I got to, I can't make a mistake. I got to put in good sprint laps. I, I have to go till the end, of, you know, all the way to run it down to the checkered flag. You know, when you got that mentality, you have, when you get the rider on defense and thinking like that, if Chase can do that, now you have a different scenario. I feel like right now, uh, Jet really knows that he still has the upper hand on on Chase. Yeah, he did. Um, after uh, after the second moto, he did he did mention that you know he he thought Chase was going to be good the next this past weekend at Millville, and he thought that he would be good at Washougal. So I feel like maybe without without putting words in Jet's mouth, maybe the, the like Millville is a tougher track for him. Maybe Washougal is a tougher track for him. And he knows that he already knows that Chase is really good at the, like, like I said, last week and this weekend. So it's going to be interesting. Um, I, you know, there's not much else to say about Jet. He did what he did. How did you, let me ask you this. How did you feel about when he rode and how he reacted when Chase was on, on his tail? Uh, I mean, I thought it was, uh, wrote a jet, wrote a, uh, a, a real, a good race. You know, I think, I, I think that, um, he obviously knew he, he, that chase bridged that gap up after having a, having a tip over. Right. So, um, that's, that's a really hard thing to do is have a mistake and then it be able to reel, reel the guy back in and let alone it be jet. Right. So I think that's a huge confidence booster for chase. Um, but also too, like I said, that, that window, if, if the window is shutting, it's, 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 I feel like it's, 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 it's been shut a little bit by chase, you know, jet used to have the window wide open. It was his race. Nobody mm -hmm. was going to really challenge him. Now that window started that sliding yeah. uh, window starting to close on him a little bit. Um, looking at, at chase's performances because they've been steadily getting better. Um, and like, we've really had a battle this, you know, and this, this at Millville, um, for those few laps. Right. And I yeah. feel like, um, you know, jet said it, he goes, he goes, chase was on it today. So you got to think that that could be starting to trickle in to the back of his mind, you know, like need to stay consistent, need to still do put in my work, you know, get good starts. Um, I'm just waiting for that moment where that pendulum kind of swings because man, it's going to be a good race to, to watch when that yeah. happens. It is. That's what I'm saying. I feel like as momentum goes, I think Chet, Jets in a, or uh, pardon me, Chase is in a great spot right now to go to your home track and uh, and and battle it out. And dude, you know how that place is, Washougal. It is so narrow, and starts are everything. And if he can get in front of Jet, uh, Jet it's going to be a lot of fun to watch Jet react. What his reaction will be, and if he just kind of follows him, if he pushes it, or maybe waits for the door to open. Man, I don't know. I mean. Look at the stats right there. I mean, yep. 2022, what are they? Yeah, Chase went 2-1 for the overall, and then Jet in the lights class went 2-2 for first overall in the 250. There you go. So I think they both ride good there, uh, but to your point, Washougal, it is a one-line track. The shadows get bad. I don't think there's another track out there. The Roost Hurts is bad this, is there. <laughs> um, you know, so if, if, if Chase can get into the lead, get a good start, now is going to be to manage – that racetrack because right. that's a i think washugo is one of the tougher tracks um because of being a little bit narrow also the traction by tv it looks great but actually it's very low down on traction mm -hmm. um so chase is really gonna have to stay sharp you know because it seems like we lose that front end every now and then well washugo is yeah. a perfect place for that that could happen yeah it's it's gonna be uh it's it's gonna be good um Dylan and um, AP had a good good battle for the podium. Um, it was interesting though, like to listen to Dylan's uh, post race interview on the podium. Mm. Look, dude, he just looked like 
so bummed and, and sad. And then uh, he had some words about the track and his opinion on the track. Uh, let's, yeah. let's roll that sound. Um, yeah, to me, the track was uh, terrible today. I really didn't like it. Uh, the I think I, I wrote this track pretty much every year, the last uh, seven years I'm, yeah, since I'm in the US. And uh, yeah, it was... Uh, the worst, the worst year that year. Uh, I don't really know why they prepped the, the track with a ski uh, ski machine. I think uh, yeah, it's a wrong sport. I don't know. I don't understand that. Uh, maybe I need to ask Jim, my buddy Jim Hart and uh, and tell him uh, what's wrong. Uh, why they do that? So um, no, I didn't really like the track. It was very scary, very tricky, and um, yeah, very hard to find uh, to do different line and find a way to pass. But yeah, anyways, the same for everyone. Uh, just uh, just difficult day for me today. Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. Um, just, you know, I think he's, you know, I know he's he, early, earlier in the season, he said he was kind of struggling with setup on, on the new motorcycle um, for outdoors. And, um, you know, I'm sure it's, I'm sure he's kind of in a frustrating spot, right? You know, it's kind of in a limbo position, you know, he's not, he's not up there for first or second. Yeah. Um, a good moto for, for, for Dylan is, it seems like around third to fourth, yeah. um, you know, and yeah, to his point about the track, you know, I saw some passes. I think you just had to set them up. Was the track fast? Yes, I think it was fast. And, you know, pre-show guys, I was talking to uh, RC about that. And, yeah. and um, you know, I, I personally feel like it's good to have a track that's got fast sections in it. But I also think that there's areas that you that you rip deep and that you that you put maybe a little more water on it. So it's a, it ends up being a little more sloppy or, or sticky. So it gets, it develops tighter. five or six, eight it's lines. Tighter. So it's tighter. Right. So I don't think we need to do the entire track where it's just till it as deep as we can get it. And it's one, you know, and then it's just pick a line, the entire track. Cause mm -hmm. I, I like having um, fast sections and, and, and technical sections involved, but yes, to his point, the track was very fast. Seemed like the, you know, I'd, I'd heard some debates about the paddle tire, you know, like, um, jet, I think jet had said, like, I think he was going to try to go to, um, the less aggressive. More, yeah. yeah. Less aggressive. I think they were back cutting the, the, the traditional yeah. call it, um, you know, not scoop tire, but traditional call it, uh, soft terrain tire that yeah. Dunlop has, you know, what's and the one, but what's the one below, uh, sorry to interrupt you. What's the one below, uh, the, the scoop tire, which one is that? Do you know? So when I was racing, it used to be called a 62. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is now, um, but is it's it still similar? very similar. It's a very similar tread pattern to what, to what yeah. I used to use. Yeah. Um, but yeah, back to that, I think it, that's a tough decision. But once again, I know we already talked about this. If, yeah. it, if you're riding MotoGP, if you're F1, any, any car racing, you, you have to debate, you have to figure out what tire you're going to run, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I know they picked the scoop tire for the start. And then towards the end of the first moto, they're like, man, the track's getting hard. And then they swapped, right? So those are all the things that I think that um, you know, as a racer, you just have to you have to make make good decisions. But I, mm -hmm. I, I see his point. Track was fast. Yeah, um, yeah, it was fast too. At the end of the day, but but like he said, it he had that little caveat at the end. He says that's ah, the same for everyone, which it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, things are so so much different now from mine and your day. Like, yeah, and I don't know that. Yeah, you know, ain't you're not going to change it. I'm not going to change it. It just, it is what it is. So you have to adapt. You might not like it, but you know what? You gotta, you gotta roll on and, and adjust your bike accordingly. So let me ask you this. You think that if they gave him his 2021 championship bike, you think he goes out and runs for the win or does he still get third and fourth? I still, I, I still think that um, Dylan would be uh, where he's at on his championship bike. Um, I really do. I think that the, Jets brought it to another level and Chase is, is bridging that gap. He's just about there. Um, yeah. So I think those two, with Jet stepping into the class, like always, he, he elevated the sport by speed wise, technique wise, all, all the above, right? He's, he's going faster. Um, yeah. Now you got to, you can't, you can't take Eli out of there and say Eli wouldn't do that same thing. I do think that Eli would be racing up there, like we said. So, um, but currently, I don't think it changes it. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I agree 100%. Dude, uh, did you see the replay of uh, uh, Jason uh, Anderson? Dude, he had a, he had a great first moto. Listen, he was he was off from Jet and, and Chase, and I don't I don't I don't think he expects to run with those guys. I wasn't expecting it, but uh, I think he had a great first moto. Epic. He charged hard. Um, you know, coming back from a gnarly injury, getting on the getting on the box. Mm -hmm. uh, massive turnaround from Southwick, no doubt. 
it was great to it was great to see him up there and then he just uh was in the wrong place at the wrong time this is uh we're watching the first moto and he's making the passes but now we're watching through the sand rollers and if you watch this is moto two at the top of the screen there's somebody gets collides together and jason anderson just runs right over his bike takes a gnarly fall uh, I wish this didn't happen. See, left of your screen, yep. two guys collide, and there's Anderson. He just jumps right into, I believe it was. Oh, yeah. Mil I don't know. Uh, Miller may might have been him. Anyhow, uh, that that was a bummer. But he rode good. Yeah, and those, the, man, those Millville whoops, you know, like seemed a little different than, um, look at that. He got a big old, oh. big old raspberry in between, yeah. between his pecs. But, you know, I, I, this year I thought, um, and I think it's been kind of developing in the past years, but I kind of remember, and you, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was the same for you. They were a little more, I think they were a little closer. Those whoops with 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 how far they got spread apart, like mm -hmm. when a guy cross, crosses over like that, you're, and they got a knuckle on the front of them too. So every time you hit them, it wanted to kind of push you forward through those. Mm -hmm. And that's not the best feeling to have, especially when somebody comes across, like you said, that bike was down right in front of them. And and those gaps were probably 20, 20, you know, 25 foot gaps in between. And you're just in midair. There's nothing you're going to do. Right. So yeah. clobbered that dude's bike. I feel like it was uh, like maybe earlier in my day, I feel like they were, they were maybe not as far apart, but they yeah. were deeper, maybe a little sandier. And again, we were on two strokes. We weren't going as, as, as fast, but they were, they were certainly deeper, but I don't think that they turned as much at the end. I almost feel like they went straight and then you did a complete 180 and 180. Came back, yeah, it came back the other way. So it kind of narrowed up, you know, at the end where that kink was to everyone was fighting for the inside, but yeah, I mean, they're going way faster now than in those days. You would obviously because the bikes are, are oh, yeah, way faster. But yeah, I they they were gnarly, one hundred and twenty percent. Um, I think that's enough talk <laughs> on the four fifty. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, no, I think we're good. Yeah, um, two fifty recap, dude. Uh, I think it was. Uh, you know what? I want your biggest takeaways. I I already talked about it on the weekend. I want to know what your takeaway was. What well. Was the for you and yeah so i think that we uh have to make a shout out to to uh to hunter and why mm -hmm. i say that is is uh devastating at southwick right motor mo had a motor issue didn't finish um strong rebound for for um hunter i pretty much you know other than that tip over when you wash the front you know like would have been a perfect day perfect huge statement uh you know a rebound um to come come back from that regain the points points lead in the red plate. Um, you know, so man, other, like I said, other than that little fall, he's just slicing and dicing through these guys. He just seemed like he was kind of on a mission. Um, and then you got Hayden going up, 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 uh, Mount the Martin. big giant Hill. Yeah. M Mount Martin there and getting kind of high side cross threaded on the side of the track there. He got lucky. Um, he didn't fall, dude. <laughs> yeah. I know no, that, that hill's steep. Oh, it is steep. Was it that steep when you were racing? Did you guys so go? All the way to the top? We never went all the way to the top. Um, we went just a, a little bit up and turned. I think we had the first, the first little step up, and then another little, littler step up where it's, it's like the middle triple step up now, and they would make a left. It never went to the top. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Hunter, I think uh, outstanding performance coming back from from that issue. Like I said, and then you know Hayden, uh, I think put himself in, you know, into, into a great position here. Mistake. Um, do you, uh, you know, you kind of have to ask the question, you know, the red plate brings a bit of weight to it, you know, and I've, I've followed and seen some of his comments and even mm -hmm. Southwick didn't have the best of, um, of weekends, you know, Southwick's gnarly track. Um, but then also this week in Millville, um, you know, it's a little bit different position for somebody yeah. like Hayden, a rookie carrying the red plate, um, leading the points, you know, hasn't been led from a, from a rookie in a very long time. Um, you know, could this be, could, th could this be a little bit of the weight? What do you think? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Um, if you look down and you t take a deep dive RV, like he was off in speed. He didn't have that good of speed in, in Southwick, like really going back and looking at big picture Southwick wasn't great. I think it was, that was his worst finish yet in, mm -hmm. in the motocross championship. And this weekend, he wasn't that fast in the in, in practice. I mean, he was fast, but not where he needed to be. And then, yeah, he he didn't have the pace in in, in both motos. So uh, maybe a little bit of it is pressure for sure. Um, it's going to be interesting. 
uh, I think he needs to, he needs to find that next step. I feel like he's kind of stuck in between like, okay, if things go right, he's going to run up front. But if things don't go right, he's going to get that fifth to seventh place. And you know, better than anyone, you can't, you can't do that against a guy like Hunter. So I feel like he's going to find it, but he's, he's caught in the middle of that next step of being able to challenge, uh, challenge Hunter every single race. That, that, that's what I think for, for him. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And also too, you know, we got to, uh, uh, I have to say that, you know, first full, full season, you know, full supercross and now we're coming into, into a full outdoor season, you know? So, um, you know, it's, uh, that's a, that's a lot of racing every single weekend being in that pressure cooker to perform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like you said, he's going to make that next step. You know, obviously everybody, you know, wants to see it. He probably wants to see it more than anybody, obviously sooner, the better. Um, <clears throat> but I do think that like, dude, guys for next year, like, um, I know there's some guys leaving the class, but you got to think that you got to know. I mean, I think I do know. I, 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 like I said, I'm not a bet man, but I would bet that next year you're going to see a completely different Hayden Deegan, yeah. um, than we even see now. I think that next year, these guys are going to have to guys like Joe Shimoda that are, that are, you know, switching teams, moving on, um, that are moving, um, you know, that are looking for a championship that are next, mm -hmm. like that's their year next year. Right. And I think they're going to have to deal with this kid. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Um, I got behind on my, uh, timing RV, uh, this oh, week kind of already answered it, but I wanted to get in some of these questions. Uh, this one's from Cassidy .peacock. She says, do you think Deegan would have held Hunter off without making the mistake in moto one? Go for it. Mm, I, I'm going to say, uh, not from watching what I watched. Um, <laughs> I didn't go this last weekend, but I, uh, everything that I watch on the broadcast and, yeah. and I, research that we do for the show, like I said, he was slicing and dicing through guys like Cooper, yeah, really he was. fast guys, like making moves, you know, and that's where Dylan had said, um, you know, in, in press conference that like, uh, you know, it was hard, kind of hard to pass, but mm -hmm. maybe it was for him, yeah. but guys like, like Hunter, like he was passing guys kind of. Uh, you know, whenever he wanted to, where he in wherever he wanted to on the track. So, yeah. um, I do not think that Hayden had a had a candle to hold to him this. Yeah, week. I, I I will say though, like I mean, and it's almost like cycling, and, and just because everyone's probably tuned in watching the Tour de France, I, I it it would have been good for him not to make that mistake. He was going to get passed for sure. I mean, he mm -hmm. wasn't going to stop Hunter Lawrence, but I feel like if he wouldn't have went off course right here, we'll watch him go off course and just how he loses this gap right here. I just feel like had he not lost, lost so much of a gap, maybe just, and I'm just, and this is a huge, maybe, maybe he would have been able to, to, to follow Hunter and latch on and, and just see where Hunter was riding you know, how he was riding so strong and the, and, mm -hmm. and how he was charging, not saying he could have made that, you know, mid race adjustment, but it would have been cool to see. And I feel like that would have been the only chance he would have had to, uh, you know, to challenge him that, but the odds were against him. I, I agree with that. And, and look, I, and the reason why I say I, I, I agree with that is, is I think Hayden's somebody that can, and is smart enough on the motorcycle that can actually turn around and get past um, if he would have just gotten past and not made that mistake and latched on and yeah. could see the lines um, at Millville. Cause Millville's a, to go fast there. I, I feel like, especially watching the track, it didn't look like yeah. it was super, super rough. Like I said, it was a little more high speed. Right. And a lot of that is I think really opening your entry of your turns up and getting yeah. your, and in, in, in getting the pivot right and where you're turning and hopping over some of the bumps. So certain things like that, I feel like, that um, he definitely probably could have latched onto him, but yeah. that yeah. doesn't mean he would have, he, he would have beat Hunter. I think latching on and staying with him for 10 minutes would have been a, what it would have been a huge, huge win for, for Hayden to, oh, dude, to think see that and run that speed and find those lines. Think that. Yeah. And it absolutely. If he, if he would have been able to see those lines run with him for 10 more minutes, he would have gapped the people behind him and then yep. probably would have been on the podium. The first moto. Absolutely. Yep. Um, yep. Totally. Nate, Nate 5302, he says, and then we're done talking about Danger Boy after this. Nate 5302 says, do you think Danger Boy can make a comeback in points? Uh, I mean, uh, yes, I do think he can, but I, really? I think, I, I you think, think he can he come can. back. Well, because it's always motocross, right? So we've yeah. already seen, we've already seen some issues um, like a Southwick issue. Right. So, yeah. but as, as for, as for, 
um, head to head racing. No, I don't, I don't think that, um, especially getting long on the tooth into the season, like we are, and like I mentioned, yeah, 13 points down. I mentioned that Hayden rookie, you know, hasn't seen a full load of an entire, um, 12 months, call it, uh, of, um, of racing and training and boot camping and all, all those, all those things that come in, um, into racing, you know, a whole, a whole supercross and a whole, a whole outdoor series. Yeah. Um, so no, I, I, I do think that obviously anything's possible in motocross, but as for a head to head race at tor- these last four rounds, um, no, I don't think there's a chance for him to, to, um, really, fight him his his way back in there i feel like it's going to have to come from a mistake yeah yeah certainly and uh it, his post his instagram post yesterday i appreciated it because i feel like he's getting a taste of how gnarly pro motocross is i mean he said it himself is how he got he got worked yesterday or pardon me he got worked on saturday and dude and every time he said something he pretty much backs it up says he's going to get better so it'll be It'll be fun to watch, but dude. Yeah. So after the race, um, after the second 250 race, Hunter, you know, he goes down. Justin Cooper gets the win. And on the podium, he says that he he needs to learn how to navigate the um the lappers better. And I'm like, hmm, okay. So the the production crew are looking to see if he collided with a lapper. And mm-hmm. walk us through this right here, bro. <laughs> I honestly, I don't see uh, plenty of space in between the lapper. And yeah. from what I can see now, we have the single in front of us. So, mm-hmm. um, but I, I do, I do say that obviously with the lapper being on the outside, um, yeah. did, did Hunter have to um, stay inside a little bit more? Did he not, did, you know, was, was the main line or his line or where he planned on going was to fade out to, to the cushion out there right at the base of that it probably was now you can see right here lapper but he has to hold it in tight a little bit and i feel like obviously you're going to be more on the side of the tire for a longer time you're not going to hit a cushion on the inside there he's right there too on the inside someone told me yep and then justin cooper went a little taller into that berm and pivoted more and came at that single straighter than hunter did um, so he's not on the side of the tire as much. So I don't think it was a lapper's issue. I feel that was a, that was a mistake on Hunter's side. Um, yeah, you know, he didn't get go. close to the lapper. Did the lapper, yeah. was the lapper in his suggested line? Ah, probably, but, uh, that's, that's racing, right? That's a yeah, lapper. I mean, yeah, it happens to everybody. And they were in his preferred line multiple times before that. Um, yeah. I, he mentioned something about it, um, at the presser, we got some, we got some tape of that. Like four lappers in front of me past, you know, few on the downhill and around that corner and just, uh, you know, they're, I don't know, they got their own stuff going on and uh, as I do and just last minute split decision to, to miss them and I uh, just pushed the front, washed the front into the face of the wall jump. So it uh, wasn't ideal and then kind of took me a bit to get up. I like almost winded myself a bit and and then I was like trying to see where third place was and I didn't know Joe was there. And then I kind of heard him on the last section. I'm like, all right, crap, I got to dig again. So it was, it was, uh, it was close, but um, no, all in all, pretty good day. Yeah. For some reason, RV, like when, when I listened to his uh, podium interview, it, he made it sound like it, he collided with the lapper, but that, that, okay. one, that one was on him a hundred percent. Yeah. And that's just, it is what it is. Like, like to your point, like, you know, they're all out there. There's the blue flags. They're all racing for whatever position they're racing for. Um, that was, that was a sheer, sheer mistake on his part. Yeah. Um, dude, uh, talking about, you know, everyone thinks about uh, is talking about Hayden and in the points, can he make it up? Uh, a couple guys that I feel like you can't sleep on is Joe Shimoda and Justin Cooper. Um, why do I say that? Because of their experience. I go back to the end of last year of how well and how well Joe was riding. And I go to the year before how, how well that Justin was riding. So I feel I I don't give them the advantage, but I feel like, man, if they could just, if if they had just a little, a couple things go right, maybe they could gain a few points on, on Hunter. Do you feel that way or not really? Yeah. I mean, I feel like it, it, uh, with Justin Cooper, obviously if you put, if he gets a whole shot or puts himself up front, um, he's a contender for that race for sure. Um, same thing with Joe. He's definitely been, been coming on towards the end, towards the end of the middle to the end of this, uh, outdoor season. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing. 
needs to start. He puts himself up front. He runs those guys as pace, but we're too inconsistent on the gate. Right. So it's like, or, or puts himself, um, not the greatest to start, puts himself in a bad position. And now he ends up tangled up with the, with one of the, um, riders around him or a mistake or a fall over tip over or something, you know, just very inconsistent. Can they run that pace with those top guys, Justin and, and Joe hundred percent? I believe they can, but they got to give themselves the chance first. Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. They got to get, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, right. It's kind of like jet dude. You can't expect to beat the dude. If you don't give yourself a fair shot. Exactly. And I feel like Joe, Joe, perfect. He's, he's probably been the worst of, of the, the uh, this season is not putting, himself in that position you know um a couple first term pileups that joe's been in um some first lap crashes um and it just sets him so far back there's he doesn't even have a chance so right. as you see right now he puts himself up front with a whole shot and he's able to run this to uh, hunter's pace for a while getting lots of pressure from hunter but mm -hmm. he's but look they got it on the gap they have um behind them is 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 a substantial gap right so he can run the pace yeah do you um, before we go, I, I have a question for you. I, I want to, uh, I want to answer our man, uh, from Fowler facts, King of the calculator statistician over the weekend does a great job. And he had an interesting question and I want to, I want to answer him. He says, why is a uh, rider? Why has rider D lost positions in 14 of 14 motos? Is it speed or fitness or other? And here, here's what I think. I think that rider D has potential. I think he's slowly getting better. I think he's got some good people around him. I do feel like we are going to continue to see him get better and better. I don't get to do, a, I don't, I can't answer that completely just for the fact that, you know, we're not, I only see what the people on the broadcast see. I'm not, you know, I'm not watching from afar. And so I, I can't really see the details. So I don't have an answer of, okay, why has he, he lost position? I'm sure there are other people that have lost position majority of the time too, but I feel like he's had a rough go and I know how this is. I mean, I feel like you just get caught in a, in a, in a web, right? And if mm -hmm. you can't get over that hump early, it takes a lot to get, you know, get, get through that. I feel like he's slowly getting better every single weekend and he's showing me speed. I think he had a pretty good, like I was watching lap times and we went back and, and he was in some good battles for that 10th top 10, like eight, eight to 12 ish. Like, you know, if things went right, maybe he would have been eighth. If things didn't go great, think he, maybe he would have been 12, but he was there like, right. He was, he, he was battling, he was battling. So, um, I know I'm not really answering, um, Clinton's. Well, I, I mean, I, I agree. I think that um, one thing that we do know is, is Ryder's a very good starter, right? So he puts himself in a good position. So I personally think to, to, what, to, to back you up on that is, is yes, coming out and, and he's a little, I think a little trapped to, to in the web, like you said, like yeah. hasn't, he came out, got a couple of good starts and it just, it seems like he's, he's having a little issue of finding himself, you know, like it's, it's like to your point of what, like, you mentioned, you mentioned Hayden, like figuring out like how tough pro motocross is. I think a guy like Hayden and Ryder, they, they, they both came up very similar, similar time or same time, actually pretty much, yep. um, making that transition, um, from amateur motocross to pro motocross is a, is a big jump. Hayden was able to, you know, springboard himself initially right in there get himself out of the middle of the web, get him out to the, to the edges of it. So he's got, you know, he's, he's got clear racetrack, you know, riding with better guys and things like that. And I think, um, that's one thing for, for, for a rider, I think it's just, just figuring out, he is figuring out how hard it is and how hard you got to really dig yeah. to, because it's pro motocross. Everybody's digging out there. Everybody's hurting. Everybody's tired. Everybody's hot, but it's how much can you dig? I think, that was a, actually I text you RC about that, um, of, of Southwick, you know, and, yeah. and look, I, I, some of the guys you got Hunter and you got jet, they stand up on the podium. Doesn't look like they're that winded. Doesn't look like they're that hot, but I sent some photos your way yeah. and it's got March banks literally laying on the ground, people pouring water on my, there was like Ferranda, same thing, got his yeah. head leaned back on a tent, you know, um, are they completely, can they, can, they can walk with their own power for sure. But I'm just it tells you, how gnarly the top guys are and yeah. also how gnarly our sport is because these dudes, these aren't, these guys aren't, 
they're not really soft, right? It's no. but they are soft compared to jet. If that makes sense. Like we're, yeah. we're dealing with the best in the world, the guys that can push the guys that can dig, dig deeper than anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, look at triath tri triathlons, right? Like it's just like yeah. that, th that race is, it comes down to fitness. Yes. Yeah. But it also comes down to the mental, how mentally and how far can you dig? And that's what you see outdoors is that's what I think we're seeing with some of the, you know, guys like Ryder, um, mm -hmm. you know, Hayden Deegan, the last two weekends, um, this, how gnarly the sport is, you know, and they're, they're both doing phenomenal jobs, but it's, mm -hmm. it's gnarly. You know, Osho used to tell me this is before I got in really good shape. And, um, I mean, still, still doing well and, and, and having success, but could be challenged. And like, he always used to tell me, he's like, dude, if you're hurting, you know, how much you, you train and you know how many motos you do, blah, blah, blah. It, and it stuck with me my whole career. And he's like, dude, if you're hurting, think of how bad they're hurting. So it helped yeah. me go, you know, a little bit deeper and a little bit further into the race. Cause I'm like, dude, it's, it's, it's basically a, a game of chicken. You had to play it with RD, I'm sure multiple times and Stu later on in your career. It's just, all right, you guys, it's, it's basically, it's a game of chicken. Who's going to go deeper, you know? Exactly. And I think, especially like, um, you probably had this, but like I, I, you would approach Dunge differently than you approach James, then differently totally. than you'd, I would approach Chad, you know, they each had their strengths, you know, um, mm -hmm. James, I could, if it was outdoors I, and even supercross, I could, I could almost not guarantee, but like, no, he was either going to falter, um, or he was going to get a little tired and I could suck him up you know, yeah. or there was just certain days I was better than him also, mm -hmm. but the yeah. days that you knew, okay, James is on, what's going to be, where's our, where, wh wh what hand are we going to play today? Is it going to yeah. be like, get a good start, let him run up front and he's going to make a mistake or he's going to get tired because it's going to be a hot one this weekend. Dunge, I had to play the card. Like, look, I know I'm, I can sprint better than him. So I got to get the start sprint as hard as I can for as long as I can. And, mm -hmm. and then manage my moto because he was the diesel that just kept pushing oh, through. Dude, that's, a, that's some epic. I love hearing the strategy. It's similar. Yeah, it, it, you know what it's similar to? And I think you and I have had, had this conversation. I feel like it's similar, like, like same with Stu. You're not going to beat him on speed most of the time, especially Supercross. And yep. I'm like, okay. And if there were times in motocross, let's just talk about motocross, where you know, I'm like, okay, I got him on speed today. This is great. But if he was showing good speed, then I was just like, okay, I'm just going to try to wear him down, you know, be just get like right behind him and pressure and pressure and pressure him until he explodes and gets tired. And, but, but Reed, he was never going to get tired. But in the outdoors, I knew that if I sprinted early and rode that ragged edge and could gap him, then I was, I was clear sailing. You were safe. Yep. Yeah. It's interesting. Like Chad it was, is. Chad was probably the hardest one to read in my opinion for me. Like, right. you know, it, one day you'd show up, Chad would be, he'd be on, he'd be right. on. And then the next, next weekend he, he, he'd be okay. But I knew that I had him, he was a third place guy that night. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's just, you had to play everybody, every, all these guys a little bit differently, you know, it's never the same hand that you'd play, um, play each of those guys with. Uh, before we get to the quad lock question of the week, I'm going to pay some bills here. Uh, United Motorsports, uh, great, uh, great company. Uh, they got six locations uh, in the Ohio, Kentucky area. Make sure you check them out, unitedmotorsports.com. Quad lock case, great company. Uh, man, I love the, man, their marketing and what they've been able to do and build that brand is, is, is a cool story. And they got great product. I got all my new stuff getting ready for the adventure ride. Uh, I got my dampener that I mount onto my handlebars and it's got a little charger now. So that's cool. My phone's going to stay charged so I can grab some content. Of course, Boxo USA, boxousa.com. Make sure you check them out. Uh, lifetime guarantee and warranty uh, on their product. So check them out. If you want 10% off, use the promo code uh, title 24. Uh, you get, uh, like I said, 10% off site wide. Everyone's down with saving uh, 10%. So make sure you use that uh, promo code title 24. Uh, Ray Butts from United Motorsports is actually joining us on our adventure ride. We take off on the 31st of July. That's going to be a lot of fun. Moving along to uh, quad lock question of the week. This is a good one. And we just actually just naturally talked about it. But it's uh, from a friend of ours, uh, Luke Banky. I appreciate this. this is great. 
And the reason that he won the quad lock question of the week, tell you guys every week, it helped it. We were able to elaborate on the question. He asked, are there, are there riders that thrive in pro motocross versus supercross? Or do the top riders adapt regardless? Same with manufacturers, question mark. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a crack at it first. So the good guys find a way to win in, in both disciplines, supercross, motocross. I feel it, it, in some instances, and I, this is from personal experience, um, I feel like motocross is way easier for me i feel like supercross is much more talent driven if you're able to get on a motorcycle and you have craft and you can do amazing things like you know like like jack can do right now take you use him wheel tapping and doing all this this stuff supercross is naturally going to come easy for you i had to work much harder uh, at supercross than i did at uh, motocross motocross came much more natural to me i could get away with a lot more and I was a hard worker. I wasn't scared to do the motos, you know, like I required a lot of time on the motorcycle. So the outdoors was easier for me. I also, you know, I'm a thicker boned kid at the time. I, I stored a lot more fat. So I was able to go longer, harder, especially in the summer months, which is massive. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, yeah, riders, you know, they, they adapt. The one person I will say, and it used to drive me absolutely up the walls and i could never comprehend <laughs> and you know where i'm going with this is chad reed the dude would give me all i ever wanted rv and, <laughs> and supercross like and then motocross i mean he had a couple you know times where he would be challenging but i knew he wasn't going to be there i'm not trying to be disrespectful but those that's just how it was but then i would be i'd be so pissed at the end of the race rv i'm like dude how can you be so good at supercross and just like dog me? But then in motocross, you, you know, you, you like, you, you're not even close to what you are to at least my, at least me. And I, it just used to drive me nuts. So outside of him and maybe at least in my career, um, he was the one that, but he won a, a motocross champion. He won a couple motocross championships, I believe maybe in the two fifty. No, maybe not in the two fifty, but uh, the four fifty he did. It was just crazy to me. What about you? That, so that's why that is a great question. Um, so g give us your, uh, what, what you think about that. Yeah, no, I, I do think, I, I think that there's some kids that, um, you know, that, that excel in supercross a little bit easier. I, I was, uh, I did both. So I came from, I can talk about myself. I came from, um, up by Seattle. Everybody knows that, which during the winter time, we, we had to go in, indoors and ride arena cross. Oh, um, just lo that. local fairground stuff. Um, but it was in a, a horse arena in a building. So was it full on supercross? No, it, it, you know, it was, it was, it was what you, what you would think of kind of a local arena cross. Everybody could ride their beginners up to, up to the pro class. So it wasn't anything gnarly, but it got me, it, I really understood supercross, um, you know, a lot better than, than probably most, at and now this was a this was a point in time too where where you know a lot of these amateur well not a lot all these amateur top prospect kids they get on supercross tracks now on 80s and super legit supercross tracks mm -hmm. um i didn't have that opportunity i had the opportunity of one time going to the yamaha track um before us open one year that i raced it on an 80 mm -hmm. um so that being said i i had already you know had a little bit of experience in in arena cross so i was i was you know i kind of knew that but we also came up racing outdoors as amateurs right but i do think that yeah there's guys that need to work harder in supercross that supercross doesn't come as easy or vice versa outdoors you know i feel like who was that guy in your career um i would say i would say dunge i think so dunge i'll use him first um pretty talented all i don't think much more talented than i was if if not the same um really good worth ethic, worth ethic, um, and was, was pretty good in both. But to your point, Chad, you brought up Chad, like there was some outdoor seasons, one, one, one season in particular at Millville where he, where he, uh, flew off the bike on that, on the jump before the step up, right? Like that was a hell of a year for Chad outdoors, but then I'd race him in the previous the year and it really wasn't even a race. There was, there was no <laughs> conversation about it, but Supercross pretty much every You're so time. disrespectful, bro. You're so <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. St stirring oh, the pot. Um, but Supercross, Chad, Chad, I feel like was 
I don't, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and speak um, at a term, I guess. I don't think it was necessarily a talent thing. I think it was, was, was for Chad for outdoors. I just think it was, if he was feeling on that, that feeling it coming into outdoors, you were going to get all of Chad. If he wasn't feeling it, you didn't get all of Chad. But every year, Supercross, you'd get every – because that was – I mean, he must have liked it better or whatever the case may be. That was kind of his gig. Every mm-hmm. year, he'd start off swinging. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hey, and the thing about that guy is he would never give up. I mean, I mean he took a beating, dude, like lining up a lot. You know, I, I use it as like the jet and chase situation. And Chase is very similar. I feel like that's what I really respect about him is like, dude, he never gives up. He knows he's going to have a lot of work ahead of him, but he's up for the challenge and he's not going to the line already defeated. And that dude, that takes a special person to do that. And I feel like, you know, because of that, it really gives himself an opportunity to get better and be in those positions to, to possibly win and get better. And that, that was the one thing about like Chad, even though he was so challenging for me in supercross motocross was nowhere close, but it it never like duty never gave up. He'd go Mm -hmm. there every weekend trying to figure out a way to win. So, uh, and I think the crazy thing about Chad though, too, is you might have, you know, he might be sitting say, let's use it as, for example, third or fourth in points, you know, Mm -hmm. 15 down, you know, not out of it, but like 15, 20 points down, um, you know, which is, that's a huge point spread in Supercross, for example. And mm-hmm. then you'd have one night where you fell and ended up fifth, but Chad won. And now it was down to like nine points. Yeah. It was like, it's, it's amazing to see the switch turn with Chad. Oh, like w- as soon as they were, he's there, the one drop of blood in the water, yeah. he, he could smell it from a mile away. Yeah. Um, you give you know, that guy an ounce, dude. And yep. it's, dude, he, it's like you give him a slice of bread and he'll take the, he'll take the freaking whole loaf, man. Yep. Exactly. So that was, I think what was kind of gnarly. Cause you'd, you'd go and you'd turn around and be like, dude, I haven't raced this guy all year. We're six rounds in. And all of a sudden now he's like, he's all over me, like, and yeah. passes you and, and then wins, you know? And it's like, where did he come from? I, oh, dude, I know it's, it's pretty incredible. Uh, Luke, thank you very much. We'll get you dialed in with some, uh, some quad lock product. That was a, uh, that was a good question. That was a good question yes, especially was. from a basic fan who doesn't know a whole lot about the sport. And it's a, it's a legit question. I feel like, you know, to your point on the manufacturer or the manufacturers, you can win on them all in both, in both disciplines. Um, yep. they, they, they all handle with pretty, pretty close percentage in, in both massive week in motorsports on NBC. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, remember always check in with the, uh, SMX insider, uh, Weej and JT that comes out Thursday at 2 p.m. on YouTube. Check it out. Saturday it starts with the IMSA series. It's at Lime Rock. I've raced there. It's a great track uh, in Connecticut. The Northeast Grand Prix at noon Eastern on USA. Next is race day live from Washougal. That's at 1 p.m. on Peacock with the race starting at four. Stick around for the post race show there as well. You won't want to miss that for little extra tidbits. And then uh, the NTT IndyCar series has a double dip in Iowa. The first one is at 3 p.m. on NBC. Lastly, the Xfinity Series is at the Tricky Triangle Pocono at 5 p.m. on USA. Uh, man, it's going to be a good one. Uh, Sunday, there's an encore presentation of Washougal, and that's at noon. So make sure uh, if you, for some reason, miss Washougal, there'll be an encore. Like I said, um, uh, the next day, that, that'll always be fun. After that, second uh, Iowa IndyCar race is at 2 p.m. on NBC. Scott Dixon's still out there looking for that first win. He's been on a dry run this uh, this year, so uh, be interesting to see if he can get that uh, get that done. And then finally, the NASCAR Cup Series is in Pocono, 2 p.m. Eastern, as well on USA. The New Hampshire race is happening right now. Actually, I was watching. Uh, I was watching New Hampshire. Uh, love that racetrack. Crazy thing is the series only has six more races until the playoffs, which leads me to um, we only got four more rounds of pro motocross till we go into the inaugural SMX playoff rounds. It's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. So, um, Ricky, which um, which one are you looking for? I think I already know the answer, but which one are you looking forward to the the most out of, you know, out of the three? That honestly, I'm looking forward to the first one in Charlotte. Uh, the reason I'm looking forward to that one is just because it's new and I think it's going to be exciting. I think there's, it's, it's going to be fun. I think we're going to have a full field, hope, hopefully, uh, so that that'll be fun. It'll be fun to see, um, 
the 250 class, uh, but it'd also be fun to see how Jet reacts to to everyone. I'm, I'm assuming everyone's going to be there except Eli, unfortunately, but I think it's going to be a dogfight. It's going to be really fun to watch. Chicago will be good, obviously, and then, of course, I'm looking forward to the uh, – la coliseum which are you yep. coming are you coming to uh you coming? I will, i'll be at the coliseum for sure um not not i don't know about the the other two but um mm -hmm. i'm sure charlotte's I've, I've actually personally been to chicagoland right. um you know cool cool place but um mm -hmm. i'm really looking forward to 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 the coliseum um you know, it's a pretty, pretty cool stadium, uh, you mm -hmm. know, to, to go back there and race. And I know, you know, they're going to run the peristyle stuff and, yeah, and, that'd be and cool. to be the, and to be in the format that we're in, you know, the, the, the gate drops. And I, I think it's going to be, it's going to be some crazy racing. And I think that's where you're going to see chase be able to, you know, potentially, you know, make some moves because we're going to have multiple gate drops. Hey, that 250 for that second and third spot and SMX points with uh, RJ and Hayden, that's going to be an epic battle because we know that we know RJ, he ain't scared to turn it loose. And neither, and neither of them are. Neither of them are. No. Those, those two are senders, you know. That's they are. And it's like 100 grand, 158, or 150 grand uh, between second and third on the payout. So that's yeah, look, we got good. 58 yeah. points for RJ and, uh, or no, sorry, he's down 58 and Hayden's down 69. It, dude, isn't it crazy how when you look at that second and third on SMX points in 250 class, doesn't it, does it, yeah. does it weird you out how Hayden is that like behind RJ or no? Um, like I look at him. Yeah, like, I guess he, he did all of, better. he did all of East coast and he did, and he had some really good finishes. Yeah. I guess you'd have to go back and have Fowler facts, pull his facts out and see <laughs> why we are where we are. There you go. No doubt. Uh, Washugal, what's, uh, what's your insight for Washugal? Who you got? What do you, or what are you looking forward to? for Washugal? Uh, I I'm looking forward to, to getting close to home. You know, it's about three, yeah. three and a half hours from, from where I grew up. So it's always fun to go back to, to that area. Um, one of the most beautiful tracks, I think, um, as for the racetrack itself, technical, like we talked about, it's technical. It's, it's a little one line. It's slippery shadows towards the end of the day. Um, you know, I know chase seems to ride the, the, the hard pack pretty good. Went two one last year there. And, um, you know, but same for jet went, you know, won his, uh, the lights class last year also overall. So, um, you know, I think it's going to come down to starts and I'm hoping to see both of those two there because I think that track is very is, it's going to be very hard to be two or three seconds faster, um, in, in the motos, you know, and I think we've seen some of that coming up where like, man, after practice, you know, jet's got two seconds on some of these guys and that's kind of a big gap to make up between, you know, for first moto, you know? So, yeah. um, I don't think we see that. I hope we don't see that. I think this track will keep these guys a little closer, yeah. uh, which is going to be awesome to see. Yeah. They're going to have to, uh, they're certainly going to have to be mindful. Like, you know, dude, it gets super slippery there. Uh, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. You gotta be the precision matters a little bit more. Um, and I think that's where jet shines, man. Um, I do. I really do think that's where jet shines coming. For example, like coming into the whoop section, right. Where it gets all slippery, you start off in a rut and then it just goes to a yeah. you know pancake blue groove, you know, like clay section. So those little things is, is what jet or the, is what, um, chase is going to have to, um, be mindful about, you know, I think he's got the speed, he's got the fitness. It's just gonna have to be minimize the mistakes. Yep. Yep. It's going to be exciting. Um, thank you everyone, uh, that listens to this podcast and watching it. We appreciate you guys. Great questions, by the way. Uh, some of them were the same. So we tried to pick out as many of the ones that weren't overlapping as possible, but a lot of feedback. So we appreciate it. Uh, thank you to all the fans that came up to us or to me this weekend and, 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 and expressed how much you like listening to our show. We appreciate it. It's fun. I feel like we're catching our stride. Uh, obviously, thanks to our partners again, United Motorsports, Quad Lock Case, and Boxa USA. We appreciate your member. You can always watch our podcast. It's on demand on Peacock, or you can watch it on the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. If you want to listen to the pod, we got some exciting news. Um, listen to the podcast on Amazon Music. You can find all the NBC, NBC sports shows on Amazon Music. Just head to Amazon.com slash NBC sports. Uh, remember, don't forget to uh, leave your comments, uh, leave your questions. We promise you that we will do our best to uh, answer them. So uh, RV, great yeah. job again today. Have a wonderful week. You going to Washougal? 
I will be going up to Washougal. I got to go up and do some Yamaha stuff on press day, and and yeah, should be good. Should be good. Good weather, and I mean, it's like a beautiful place to go. You're gonna you're gonna hold the Title 24 flag down for us uh, in Washougal. I get the weekend off. That's right. I'll be there. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.